the unit four on a page. Uh, this, I think, is actually really, really cool, because it's coming back to what I said that first day of class. Physics is a short set of ideas. It's a short collection of ideas that we apply to a wide variety of very disparate situations. But the ideas, the set of ideas is very, very short and very, very limited. I can get almost everything for unit four, the most important ones, here on this single slide, which is now up on Moodle as a PDF if you wanted to print it out and bring it around, uh, bring it to class. So what are the big ideas? All charges will generate what is called an electric field. Any charge will generate an electric field. The units of electric field are newtons per coulomb or volts per meter. These are the same explored in your reading. And electric fields, if they're made by a positive charge like this one, they point away. If it were a negative charge, if this were an electron, the electric fields would point towards it. OK? So charges make electric fields. And these electric fields exist. This is the big, big point. These electric fields are real things. OK? So if I have the dumbest universe I can think of with nothing in it but a proton, there's actually two things in that universe. There's the proton itself and the electric field it makes. The proton itself and the electric field it makes are both there. OK? So it's this thing. It's generated by charges. They have energy. You can get that energy out. Basically, that's what an electric motor is. Um, you can get that energy out. So they exist. What else do they do? If I put some other charge in an electric field, it will feel a force. So in this case, basically I'm building up an atom here. I put an electron near this positively charged thing, and it feels a force. Ultimately, the question I'm looking to answer is, in an atom, you've got the proton and the electron cloud thingy, right? How does the electron know the proton is there? They don't touch. How do they know? Well, this. The proton generates an electric field. And then the electrons, they do touch the electric field. There's an electric field at that point. And it feels a force in. And that's what holds the atom together. OK? So a charge in a field feels a force. If you translate this into words, charge in a field feels a force. And this actually works as a true vector equation. Uh, since the electron is negatively charged, the force is in the opposite direction to the electric field. Right? If Q is negative, then F is opposite E. So it all works out for you. All right? So field, think. Think back to 131. I can explain the fall of the marker two ways. We actually did it essentially two ways. We can either use Newton's laws and forces and simulate the motion of the marker as it falls. That was a simulation lab that I know many of you did. Or we could say it has potential energy, kinetic energy, and we can convert. Right? Two different ways of describing the same physical phenomena of a falling marker. Same is true for electricity. I can think about forces, or I can think in terms of energy. All right? The analogy is I can think about fields, or I can think about this thing called potentials. So instead of thinking about this positive charge Q generating a field that goes out and points away from it in all directions, expanding through space, I can think of this charge generating a potential around it. 
Now, this is probably the single most annoying piece of terminology in physics. I didn't make it up, but we're stuck with it. Potential and potential energy are two very different things. Related, but different. Moreover, potential is a V measured in volts. Potential energy is a U measured in joules. So even the symbols look kind of the same. It's a big pain in the butt. But we've got to deal with it. So the potential is what it's, it's this invisible thing that the charge generates around it. And when I put another charge, in this case the electron, in the potential, it feels a potential energy. So just like with the field, the potential exists. Q generates this V around it, and that exists. But then when I put an electron in it, now I have potential energy, QV. OK? And we can actually go and calculate the field, sorry, the field and potential from point charges. You can actually do it for all sorts of things, but we're just going to stick mostly to point charges. You can calculate the field. So this is plus Q making the field, or plus Q making the potential. These describe how my electron responds to that field or potential made by Q. And then the last piece is electric potentials and electric fields are, are they're, they're two ways of looking at the same thing. They're two ways of just looking at the same thing. Again, going back to 131, I can think about forces or energy. I can think about this thing that Q is making either in terms of potential or in terms of electric fields. They're the same, they're, they're two sides of the same coin. The electric field points down the potential hill. This is a thing that will be described more in your reading. And you can actually convert from one to the other. You can convert from E to V and back. OK? So that's unit four.